Hello, everyone. Okay, I don't see anyone. Let me see if I can see anyone. Oh, I see some people. Hi. Hi. Hello, hello. Okay, everyone is muted and put away underneath a dark screen. Hi, Gabrielle. Hi, Libby. Hi, Rihanna. Hi, Galaxy A10E with the beard. That one. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's start. Okay. So here, this is what I want to explain to you for a second how we're organizing this because it's really important that we're going to understand how we're learning. We're going about, we're just learning this. We're learning this with Havrusa of about 30 and 40 people here. And the way it's structured, I'm following the structure of the safer because I, I see I like the structure very, very much. I like the way it's structured and I like the way it's set up. So the first the first 17 pages of the safer, okay, talk about the these first 17 pages talk about the basic understanding, the outline of the elements, the outline of what basically each thing means and how it like how it you know comes out and how it manifests in a person's being and and so it's very like it's very light it gives you a basic outline and then the rest of the book the other 5000 pages are going deeply into every single element so this is what i want to do this is what i decided that i want to do right now we covered two elements we covered fire and we did water what i want to do right now is give an overview for 5 10 minutes of fire water wind and air i want to give an overview of all of it and today Instead of just doing earth, we're going to do earth and air, okay? Both of those elements together. Once we have all the four elements, the basic outline, have it in your notes, like write down for yourself, and I'll show you like a, a little bit of my of my thing that I have going on here. I basically, I make it very clear to myself because you're going to, there's going to be a lot of information. It's going to look like a tree, you know, it's going to look like a, um, um, like a family tree. You're going to end up having, let's say, for example, you have the, the fire here, and then you're going to, Based on our learning, we're going to have, okay, so fires, good meadows, his bad meadows, how he comes out in business, how he comes out in relationship. You're going to see the, the fire, how it, how it interacts with all different forms of a person in their life, how this person interacts. And you're going to also realize that you know a lot of fire people in your life, and you're going to see how you're going to see the water, you're going to see the fire, you're going to be able to just point them out very, very clearly, very easily, because there's one quality that each of us carries that really dominates our being, it really dominates our thought processes, our decisions, dominates it all. Okay, so make a, make a clear chart for yourselves. Today, we're going to do an overview, and then we're going to learn, we're going to learn water, I'm sorry, we're going to learn earth, and we're going to learn air. Okay, so let us begin. Okay, I would, just because we're doing this, um, we're going through, I've never done this before. I've never given a class. I've never given a, a talk or a series or anything like this. That we're literally going through the safer and we're learning along the safer. I've always just kind of learned it, wrote my own notes on it and taught it that way. But there's something very, very cool about really learning it inside, learning the text, learning it, seeing, like really knowing this material and having it under your belt. And that's what I want you to have. If I would summarize it and I would give it to you, it would be nice. But by the fact that we're going to drill it into our minds and we're going to learn so many different aspects to it, it it brings it, it really allows you to, to learn it, know it, al like fully, all around, see it in 3D in color. Okay, and that's the idea. Okay, so um, uh, let's start for a second. Let's get an overview for a second of fire. What did we say fire was? What is, how does fire manifest in a person? So if anybody wants to answer, you can answer. I would love for some interaction. I would love that. Please feel free. If anybody wants to answer, this is a really good way of, for you to throw yourself into the water. It sounds stupid for a second, but know that you're getting this information. Should I call on someone? <laughs> okay. So, uh, so okay. I'm, I guess people, yes. Yes. Somebody raised their hand. That's so nice. No one ever raises their hand. I don't know who it was. You don't have to raise your hand. You could just talk. Just yell it out. This is a little hard. I see that this is a little complicated for all of us. Rizkowski. Yes. 
Okay. Okay, so we're, okay, so they texted me from the lighthouse that I should just give my class and not ask anyone any questions. So just want you to know that I'm super into connecting with all of you. And I really, I feel like that's missing from this because I, I get all of my energy from people that I learn with. But since this is like this, then we have to deal with what we got. So I'm just going to keep going. But if you ever, if you want to ask any questions or if you want to ask me anything personal or share anything personal or whatever, just send me a message afterwards after class and I'll definitely get back to you. Okay, so basically what we said about fire is that fire, the way it works, the way it manifests in a person's personality is that a fire person will want to always be on top of their game, will always want to be not on top of their game, but reach the highest level. We, meaning the fire is kocha mechale. Kocha mechale is the power of consumption. Power of consumption means this person has to consume the step that he's on in order to get to the next step. He has to consume the relationship that he's in in order to get to the next relationship. He has to consume the job that he's in in order to get to the next job. Meaning the guy burns the bridges. That's the only way he moves forward. He needs to get the most out of this thing that he's in. And once he gets the most, it's almost like he squeezes this lemon. When the lemon is dry, he throws it away and he wants another one. He wants something else. He wants another thing. He wants another experience. He's not, he's not just going to be one of these people that's just going to have a nine to five job for the, for the next 20 years. And that's how he's going to live his life. No, that's not a fire personality. A fire personality, now he's the, now he's the, the guy at the desk. Great. Then he's going to become the CEO. And then he's going to become the president and then he's going to move to the next company and buy it. He has to keep rubbing shoulders with the people on top. He needs, that's where he gets his chiyas from. That's where he gets his energy from. That's where he gets his, his life force from, from being on top. He doesn't necessarily need to be doing the things that tickle his fancy. He doesn't necessarily need to be doing the things that inspire him and that give him like a sense of life. And no, he is all about, he's all about having that, that, um, that rush, the rush and the rush comes from, for him, making it to the top. Wherever he is, he needs to be the top. He's very competitive. He's extremely competitive, okay? What's, what's good about a fire personality, there's a lot of very good, most of the people that are running the companies and most of the people that are, you know, I don't want to say narcissists, but that goes hand in hand very much because a person that is a fire personality is a bal gaiva, okay? Now, again, Every quality, every element, this is something that you have to understand. I'm not going to repeat this every class. You just have to know this. Every element has good and has bad. An element is not either good or bad. It has both sides. Meaning your personality comes out through the tsinorot, through these pipes of these elements. That's how your personality gets manifested in this world. That's what makes you a, a bal gaiva or makes you into a person that doesn't think enough of themselves or makes you into a person that, you know, gets angry quickly or a person that is lazy. That's what your character comes out through these channels. Okay. These are the channels that the character comes out of. Now here you have the fire element person that the one that the, the most dominating aspect of their nefesh is the fire. They're going to have a very hard time being humble. They're going to have a very hard time not stepping on, on people around them in order to get to the top. They're going to have a very hard time doing that. Okay. But on the flip side, okay. On the flip side, a fire element person is a person that doesn't stop growing, does not stop growing. There's never a dull moment for this person. They don't want to stop growing. So if the person is using it in a positive way, they're going to grow and grow and grow. They're going to finish us and then they're going to do it again. And then they're going to learn this halakha and then they're going to learn it again. And then they're, they're just going to keep upping their own game. They're going to have their, their learning center is going to be compiled of a, a hundred different things because they have, they're competing almost with themselves or with somebody in yeshiva or with somebody that, that's better than them or further up the, the game than they are. They're not going to stop. They're not stopping. Okay. And they have issues with, with gaiva and kas. They have issues with these two things, meaning much easier to set them off, much easier to get them upset, much easier to make them understand your side. They have a very hard time with that, okay? But they're also big doers, big time doers. The, the biggest people, the biggest, Trump. Trump is a fire personality, hardcore. He is 100% Trump is a fire personality, okay? He won't stop at anything. He had to, after becoming a multi-billionaire, he had to become the president. He won't, he won't stop at just, you know, let me just be a multi-billionaire and live my life and have all. All my friends and connect after. 
happening. He's gonna be presidency. He's gonna take it, God willing, to the next presidency, and then he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna keep going until he dies. That's fire. Okay, Gaiva, yeah. Short temper, yeah. Okay, not listening to anyone else. Narcissistic qualities, yes. Okay, so that's fire. And then we moved into water. And water, we said like this. We said water, what's the quality of water? Water is meaning a person that has a lot of water in their character will be a person that gets his life force, that gets his chiyas from things that fulfill him, that inspire, that tickle his fancy. Hefech from the fire, that tickle his fancy. He's not going to do anything. You can offer him a million dollars to do to sit by a desk every day from nine to five. He's not doing it. He'll do it for a week and then he's out of there. He's not doing it for the money. He wants money. He cares about money, but not as much as he cares about what makes him feel alive. Kacha mekayim is water. Just like water gives life to everything. It's the life force for everything, everything in this world. And we cannot live for more than three days without water. We can go 40 days without food. Okay. A person that is a water personality will will be addicted, will be a junkie, okay? For what gives him life, for what inspires his soul, for what makes him feel that sense of, ah, oh, I'm alive. I feel so good about doing this. I feel so good about giving. I feel so good about learning. I feel so good about praying. I feel so good about going out of my, going out of my way for someone. I feel so good about, that's where they get their, their excitement from. They get, and that's what they need. They'll be broke. They'll be out of a job. They won't be able to, they, they just won't be after those things, because those things, if those things are not giving them chiyas, they're not doing it. He will get chiyas from making money, but only from making money from something that he loves and something that touches his heart, something that really makes a difference to him. Okay, so that that's the that's the uh, the strong element of koch of koch amayim. Okay, and now we have to talk about the flip side. We have to talk about the negative aspect of koch amayim. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Hang on. Okay. Where do you go? Where's my Kwachamayim? Kwach. Oh, here it is. All right, I got it. Okay, so what happens with the mind person is that they always feel like they're missing something. They always feel like something is missing. They always, they're, they're always needing to feel alive. They're, now, them needing to feel alive can come from different things, right? We said this last time. A person can get a, their life force from spirituality and from learning and from doing mitzvot and from helping other people. They can literally be a junkie. They can literally, it's not like you're doing them a favor by listening to them or by taking from them, or by being a person that they're allowed to, that they can do chesed with, they literally need you. Otherwise, they can't live. They can't breathe. They need to be giving. They need to be helping. They need to be fixing. They need to be learning. They need to be praying. They need to be going out of their way. They need to do that. That's what gives them their air. Okay? That's what gives them their, their ability to breathe. And that's all they care about. Okay, so they're also growing all the time, but their growth is very much dependent on, not like the fire one, that he doesn't care if he's getting his chiyas and not getting his chiyas from the thing itself. He cares to be on top. That's what he cares to be, on top. That's what he cares about. That's where he gets his life force from, from being on top, not from doing what he's doing on top. Water is, he's, he gets his life force from doing what he's doing. And if he's not doing what he loves, he's out of there. He's done. That's it. It's very, very simple. They're both growing. They're both moving upwards, even though water moves downwards. That's the natural path of water. Water, I'll explain to you what the thing with water is. Water, his natural uh, movement here is downwards. Now, we have to know the same way you see the elements interact in nature is the same way. They have the same rules. They interact in your nefesh. Same way. Okay, so water has this downward motion, and that means that water can also, this, the flip side of water, is that they're very, very gashmi'im. They're very, very, um, they need a lot of stuff. They like stuff. They like nice. They like fancy. They like things that, um, that make them feel good. They like pleasure. They like pleasure. Water likes pleasure. Now, a person that's not connected to their, to their spiritual side and they're just much more 
physically oriented, a water person that's more physical and not as spiritual as the people that we've been talking about till now will be the person that's going to, you know, rent the limo, go to Vegas, have the party, go out with their friends, order everyone's steaks and beers and wines and things. A person that is needing pleasure in every way, physically, in every way. Yachts, cruises, uh, trips, traveling, that's that kind of person, okay? That's the person that's gonna need that, okay? So it we're, so when you have a person that is not spiritually inclined, being a water person, you gotta know that the person that's, that, that loves, loves living, living, not spiritually living, but physically living, they're a water sign, okay? They are a water sign. They're always running after pleasures. They're always running after what feels good. They're probably usually also eating a lot, okay? Because eating makes you feel good. Okay, whatever gives them that sense of yum in whatever way. So if they're spiritual, the yum is going to come from kivar tadikim, from learning shas. And if they're more physical, more gashmi oriented, their, their yum is going to come from shopping and traveling and anything that's, that, that delivers, gives them a lot of pleasure. Okay, again, we're doing this, we're moving through this quickly. And the next element that we're talking about now is earth and then the last element we're gonna you know what we're gonna do the next element we're gonna do what we're gonna do earth uh air sorry we're gonna do air and this element okay this element we haven't learned yet to so take notes and uh we're gonna fly through it no pun intended okay um thanks for laughing marcella i appreciate it okay so where is it where's my air okay here we go Wind, air, have this. Air equals movement. Okay? Movement. Is it moving anywhere in specific? No. Does it need to move anywhere in specific? No. Does it need to go anywhere, do anything, be someone, go up, 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 go? No, it doesn't need anything. All it needs, all air needs is to move. People that are air signs, people that are air elements in their nefesh are always moving. They're moving to the store, they're moving back home, they're moving in the house, they're moving when they wake up, they're moving when they're sleeping. They're always moving. They're constantly needing to move. They cannot stop, they cannot stop. And a lot of times, let me just say this for a second, a lot of times we can think that let's say we have a child that has a lot of air in their, in their nefesh, we can think that they're ADHD. We can think that they're ADHD because they can't sit still. And that's not fair because they just are dominated by this klach ruach from this air, air force. Now, what's so amazing about air? I love air signs. I love them. I love them so much. It's not signs, it's an air element. I keep saying signs, but it's an element. What, what's so amazing about them? Here. Okay. We all have this air sign in us. All of us have this air element in us. We all do. We all have four of them. Okay? But in order to have the other three, you have to have the air because water can't go nowhere and earth can't do anything and, and, uh, and fire can't go anywhere without air. All of the elements need the air in order to function, in order to be there. So air is in every aspect of your, of your character, in essence. And air doesn't need to do anything. It doesn't, it, it goes, it says the cholat zadim, goes all in all directions. Dala dalchot, lemala, lemata, up, down, just think wind, okay? There's no specific way okay it just goes everywhere okay. it's just the movement it's the power of movement every single person has a has an internal force strength in their ofi in their personality that demands of them to have this movement part of them if a person for example is depressed okay and then we're going to learn how usually it's the earth earth people Earth element people that have more of a natia have more of a of like a, a leaning towards depression than the other elements. Okay. Now, Earth, I'm just gonna give you a sneak peek for a second. Earth is very give me boundaries, give me borders, give me times, give me exact times, give me limits. Okay. Earth is very um very uh stubborn. Earth is very stagnant, it's very dependable. It's very, um, you know, it never moves. It never moves, okay? The only time there's an earthquake 
any kind of time that 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 means a lot spiritually and that's a whole other conversation i'm not going to bring it up right now because i'm going on off on a tangent but earth is very much stability okay stubbornness um doesn't see anyone else's point um has a very hard time moving from his decisions from his or her uh thought processes not open very much to other people's opinions wants needs knows this knows his way and his way is best okay his way is best and it can i can that can come out in fire also but earth is different earth is like i am the wall i am i am i am here you align you line yourself up next to me otherwise you can go find yourself other people but this is who i am this is what i am love it or leave it that's basically earth earth is very much i don't bend to nothing i don't bend to no one i am me and you bend to me that's earth okay now um the the elements in the earth for a second i'm just going to say can go in and you'll see it in and manifest in a person in a tslanut in laziness in a in a in a tslanut in laziness in a tzvut, in sadness okay and what was the other thing that he said hang on and oh, we're gonna get to it in a minute oh yeah the shiflut and it doesn't think much of themselves low self-esteem okay low self-esteem so the 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 positive side is that he's dependable and he's you know he's sturdy and he you can really lean on him and he you won't ever have any changes in schedule no changes in schedule the schedule will remain the same every day the same thing same they'll have like they'll have the menus for 20 years they have the same menu pizza on thursday you know eggs for a monday morning like they'll have those kinds of things then you'll have you know you'll have the water people that are just like totally not like that or the air people that are totally not like that but the earth is very very much like that, like that. very very much yes like that so you, we're gonna go back to the air for a second so air the way it goes is that it doesn't need to go anywhere or do anything it just needs to go you know what i'm saying it doesn't have a direction it has no it has no address it's just gonna get in the car and drive I don't even know where I'm going right now. I just need to go. I just need to be in motion. I need to be in movement. I don't know how many, how many of you felt that. I feel that a lot, that I, I just need to move. And I don't care where. I'll go here, I'll go there, I'll go places I don't even need to go. Sometimes I'll just get lost. Not on purpose, but I'll just be, I don't find, okay, I'm okay with it, I'm okay. Lost, because sometimes when I'm just moving, I'm thinking better and I'm able to, to know what I want for myself. I'm able to decide things. That's why people go for drives when they have to clear their heads. Who goes for drives? Air people, very much. Air elements people, they need to drive in order to clear their head because they need to be in motion constantly, okay? Let's see what else we want to say about Ruach. And a person that has Ruach needs to accept the fact that he's always needing to move. Needs to accept that fact about himself and love that fact about himself and stop you know, judging himself or not being more earthy or not being more water-like or not being more fire-like, but being much, accepting the fact that he is obsessed with motion, obsessed with movement, loves to travel, loves to move the furniture around in his house. Every month the couch, couch is in a different direction and the TV is in a different direction and it's all different, always, always moving. It always needs to move. Okay, I need to accept that about himself. A lot of times people that are like that feel like there's something wrong with them. I have friends that they feel like there's something wrong with them because they're always needing to be in action mode and, they're, and they, they, they hate that about themselves. Now, we all hate the things that are about ourselves that are dominating in a certain way. We all do. We all wish we had more of this and more of that. And that's what we're going to be doing here. And these classes, these classes are not just information. These are not just information. These classes are like, okay, let me, let me see. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna get a very clear map of who I am and where I am. And I want you to start, I want you to start making graphs, like charts and show yourself, okay, I'm a little bit, let's say I'm 20% I'm water, 5% this, 5% that, like make it, figure out from the information that you do do know right now, try to get yourself into some kind of a box, something, just to get a clear vision of yourself. And as we move forward, you, we're gonna go into nitty gritty examples details and then you'll really be able to say okay so i am 70 percent water i am 10 percent fire 
No, that's wrong. I am 60% water, I'm 10% fire, I'm 10% wind, and I'm 10% water. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm really 70% water. So now, now that I know that I'm 70% water and I know that all the other elements are much weaker by me, so what do I do? And this is another sneak preview into, into after we move into the next part. Now I know that the opposite, the opposite element to me, to the most, the one that, that's most dominating in my nefesh, let's say mine is water. So the opposite to water, which is, which is constantly needing either if it's in the pleasure mode then it's pleasure and liking new things and, and, and money and pleasures and flying and fancy and new cars and all of that stuff. And if it's in the spiritual, then it's constantly spiritual and praying and this one and that one and all of these different spiritual experiences flying around to different, you know, Kvarim in Prague and in Poland and in all these places because the nefesh doesn't let you stop. It needs constantly doing that. So now the opposite of that, I want to balance that out. I want to balance out the water. I want to balance out the water. So what would I use to balance out the water? It doesn't mean that I don't love the water part of me. I love the water part of me. I love the fact that I'm driven like that. But what happens? What ends up suffering? What ends up suffering is usually that I'm so into feeling that good all the time that I end up ignoring the things that are like things that I don't like doing. Like I think I mentioned this last time, like the dishes. <sighs> like, like um, you know, my kids' bedrooms. It's like, it's like moving into there. It's there, by the way. That's that, that's the room. But like moving into into that position for me requires me to like <sighs> please God. <laughs> help me help me do the dishes you know i want to you know it's good for me you know it's good for the family like that like that i promise you that's how that's how i am like anyone that comes over that does the dishes for me i make them food i love them i give them things i like i every i'll do whatever i'll sell my soul just please don't make me because i hate it and then and then i can have a crazy class at night like something like i'll be speaking for nyu but like, I don't want to prepare now, even though I love preparing, because there's like a thing in, like, there's a thing in Kiva Rachel, there's a thing by the Kota. So that's nice that in four hours, I have to be all prepared and ready in front of NYU to speak. But I gotta go, I gotta go, I have to be there. Like that. Okay. And then like 45 minutes before my talk, I'm like, <gasps> okay. <laughs> right? Like that. No good. That's not good. That's not a healthy combination because then it puts me in a position where I'm always doing the things that I like doing. It's almost like the kid that's always running after the candy. You want the candy. I get that you like the candy. I get that you love tasting the candy. I get it. But you have to go, you're going to have to go through doing these things first before you get the candy. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to always be doing the things that I love doing, but it means that I have to, once I become aware of the fact that, oh, I am a spiritual junkie. Oh, and that's why I don't know how much money I have in my account. And that's why I'm not sure um, where certain things are. I'm not sure, right? So I have, in order to balance out myself, I still am going to be a spiritual junkie, but I become aware of the fact that I'm a spiritual junkie. And once I become aware of it, then the next time I want to leave my house two hours before a talk, I'm not going to worry. Maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe you should sit, prepare first, and then go. And then the child inside of me is going to be like, no, I want to go now, oh, now. I want to know, go now, like that. But, but, but sweetie, no, that's, that's what's so good about these elements. That's what's so good about pinpointing the, hang on, my phone's about to die. One second. One sec. Sorry. You guys. Okay. Hi, Shoshana. You're very pretty to look at. <laughs> I'm admiring your makeup. You know I'm a makeup artist, right? Also. Admiring your eyeliner and your thing. Okay, so fine. Let's continue. Fine. So the next part we're going to talk about is Earth. Okay, so wait, so the water, the air, I just want to make sure that we're, we're, we're finished with air. 
We're going to get back to it, obviously. You ju we just literally tip tip of the iceberg. We're going to get back to it deeply. But I just want to make sure that you get that it's that it's the movement, okay? And it gives everything else, all the other elements, it's life force, it pushes everything else, it moves everything else. It's Kacha Um, Yeah, okay. So now we're going to move into our topic of the evening. And that is Afal, okay? Earth. I'm going to read from inside. Perfect timing. I'm going to read from inside. Now he's going to go a little bit over review for a second. And the Zohar says, that earth is called, now listen to this. This is so amazing. This, uh, meaning the Zohar calls earth the empty element. Empty. It's the empty element. Just like the earth itself, you don't put any seeds into it, nothing is coming out of it, it's just dry earth, okay? Just like it's just like it's like that, in actual, in the Gashmi part, in the real, like, you know, physical earth. What you put into it, what you plant into the ground, that's what's going to come out of the ground, meaning the ground, the earth interacts with what you plant into it. In and of itself, it's rek. It's rekani, it's empty. In and of itself, it's emptiness, okay? But what, you, what, it, what it does, it's po'el on what you put into it, meaning what's, what, what seed you put into it. Let's see how this manifests in a person. The same way as in a person's nefesh. People with earth, earth elements, from themselves, they don't really have much. They work with things in order to, to, to manifest the earthiness. Meaning just like the earth, just like you put a, a tomato seed into the ground and grows a tomato, a tomato plant, right, from it, in and of itself, the earth doesn't do anything. The earth does something, it comes to life when it gets to interact with something else. And then you see the earth in action. And then you see the earth doing things. Up until you put something together with the earth, it's not doing anything, okay? In and of itself, it's trick, okay? That's the, 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 the function, the mission of earth. What's the function of it? To give things boundaries, to give whatever it's working with some kind of uh, uh, definition. That's what it does. So you put a seed into, into the ground, it defines the seed. It gives it a name. It gives it a, a, a uh, actual being, a tomato, okay? It defines the seed. It gives definition to what's, to what's in the seed, to the memory that's in the seed, to the, to the chachma that's in the seed. It gives it, shows it, it brings it to life. That's what it's po'el. It works on whatever you give it, okay? So it, it gives a definition. He doesn't have his own it doesn't have his own tfista, like it doesn't have his own personality almost like. An earth person doesn't have their own personality. They work off of what's around them, what's with them. That's what they work off of. And they give that definition and they give that structure, 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 structure. That's the word, structure, okay? Okay, so that's the koch and the nefesh of the person that is me'atsev, that gives structure to all the other elements. So for example, I'm water sign, I'm a water element, and I, my thing is to, uh, is to experience what feels good in the moment. So earth, earth interacts with water in a way that it'll, that it'll give me that, I'll, 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 I'll make myself sit down and let's say take my notes before I take off and do the thing. Meaning the earth will interact with the water in a way will it will it will bring it into in, it will bring it into it'll make the or the water shine it'll make the water get to its top level to really to max it not water that's that's just going with the flow sorry not water that's just like kind of like doing its own thing like giving the kid a candy giving the kid a candy giving the kid a candy constantly over and over again because he wants a candy. So water is going to be the mom that's going to say, sweetheart, no candies today. There's no candies today. That's the, that's the earth, I'm sorry. That's earth is going to come and tell water there is no candy today because earth just wants pleasure. And I'm sorry, water just wants pleasure. And the earth comes and says, 
right now there's no there's no pleasure for you in this de- in this department there's focus for you on this and once i become focused on this then the water part of me will shine even more cuz cuz everything needs definition you can't just be like like this and like so you can't you need to have definition in all of your elements it's almost like I, I can want to drink all I want. I can want to drink. I could be dying to drink and I could be standing under a waterfall. But if I don't have a bottle, if I don't have a cup, if I don't have something with boundaries, borders, with definition, I can't, I can't quench my thirst. It's not going to go in here. I might stand under the waterfall and try to get some in my mouth, but the amount that I'm getting in my mouth in comparison to how much I'm going to get from a bottle is, is Shemai Bao. It's, it's night and day. Meaning you have vessels in order to experience it much more intensely than without any vessels, than without any definition, than without any boundaries. That's the chachma of mitzvot. That's why mitzvot are so brilliant. Because if everything is allowed all the time and everything is, there's almost like, there's no, um, there's, there's no, it doesn't do anything for the person. It's like the waterfall that like, you know, I want to drink, I want to drink, but like I'm getting in. Uh, I'm getting either I'm getting wiped out by the waterfall and I can't stand with my mouth open under it because I get flushed out by it, right? Or I'm just getting drops from it, but I'm not really drinking like I want to drink. In order to drink like I want to drink, I need to have some kind of cleat, some kind of vessel to hold all of that in in order to be able to really hit the spot. You want to hit the spot in your life. You want to live your life correctly. You want to use all of you, all the parts of you, every single aspect of you in order to come at life in the right way. Now you have to know, first of all, where are you strong? Where are you weak? I know where I'm weak. You got to get to, you got to know where you're strong and where you're weak and accept it. Accept it like love, love it. But just know that it's not like, you know, when, when like if I, if, when I was a little girl, I remember when the teachers would say like, you know, take out your math, I would want to kill myself, literally. I just want to, all I'd want to do is take a shovel and like bury and just go underneath. I would rather do it. I'd rather do dishes than do math, that type. Okay. But for, for, for a person like me, my natural, my natural reaction, my knee jerk reaction, not as a little girl, because as a girl, I couldn't, but now get up and leave, walk out, literally walk out. If it's not, if it's not hitting the spot for me, I'm out. Offer me however much money you want to offer me. Give me, put up, put like the biggest title under my name. Hook me up with the, the movie star and celebrities. If I'm not feeling it, bye, I'm out, I'm out. So the, the earth element in me will come and say to me, here's a vessel. This way you can get more, more out of the water that you are, more out of the pleasures that you're after you can get. Because it's almost like, it's almost like play hard, work hard like that. Water only wants to play hard. They don't want to work hard in terms of do the things that they don't want to do. But the combination of working hard and playing hard gives the person so much more satisfaction. When you work hard, you can get, you can feel so good when you play hard. But when you're just playing hard all the time, just playing, just chilling, just sunbathing, just shopping, just getting your nails done, just going out for brunch, just, you know, looking to satiate your pleasures. And after a while, it's like, but if you're saying to yourself, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that drink with my friend at five, till five, I'm going, I'm working. And once I get to that, to that, to that restaurant, I'm, and like, I'm, now I'm not working. Now I'm playing. Now I'm having fun. Now I'm dancing. Now I'm chilling. Now I'm talking. Now I'm, now, now I'm in that vibe. But you have to create some kind of earthiness around that in order to be able to really enjoy it, in order to be able to really get the most out of it. Not just run, run, run after your pleasure. So um, we're going to learn, we're going to learn also how earth interacts with fire and how to, how to create boundaries around the fire, how to bring fire down to its knees a little bit, how to be able to say fire. I get that you want to get to the top, but there's no getting to the top through stepping on every little guy along the way and through speaking gossip about the person that's working your co- co-worker so you can get the position. You have to create boundaries in every single one of the elements. And in fire, let's say, the most important thing to f- for fire is to be on top, to be the number one guy, right? So he'll, he'll, he's willing to do anything to get there. So an, 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 an mixing fire together with earth would, would be telling fire, that's a shanara, you can't do that. You, you have to rather lose your job than speak ill of your coworker. You're not allowed to do that. That's putting a cap. That's putting a cap on his fire. That's teaching him how to... How to, how, to, how to curb 
his fire, how to curb his need to get to the top. You'll have a kid, you'll have a kid that like, you know, loves to acquire, but mine, it's all mine. Teaching this child how to share is putting earth into their, into their fire, or into their water. Teaching them how to share, breaking that, breaking that like, I, that knee-jerk reaction to never let anyone touch my stuff, never, never let anyone come into my room, never let anyone look at my things, never like, like because he has this thing with acquiring. Now we said, who, who, who acquires, who loves gosh me stuff, the person that's far from the Rukhni, let's say a person that, that manifests the water in a gashmi way will also have a lot of things, will also be very into his things and won't like to share his things. Won't like to share his things. Maybe he'll like to share his yacht so he can show it off. Maybe he'll like to share his yacht so he can chill and have play cards and drink some booze with his friends. But he's not going to want you to take it out for a spin. Because you might damage it, you might hurt it. Da 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 da. I don't think it. Okay. So to put to put earth into that water would be to push him into sharing, into being a giver. In Hebrew, it's called lotita yad yad live. A person that has his yad in his live. That's a that's in a metaphoric way of saying stop holding yourself back so much. Stop not allowing people in. Stop not allowing the way you feel out. Let your heart go. Unleash your heart. So tita yad me'alev. Give to that, even if you have no money. Give. Give. Right? That's forcing this person, that's all about me, 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 to be in the earth for him. Now, the opposite of earth, the opposite quality of earth is air. Okay, let's see what he says here. Um... Here. By the way, if you can get this book in Hebrew, I bought it in America. If you can get it, I think it'll be so nice for you to have it. We're literally going page by page. See my notes? Like, it's really nice. It's really nice just to have you can write on the side or you can put papers inside. It's nice to go through it and to read the words inside and you see it in front of you. Okay. So he says, he says here. Kasher adam is there, she'elot tfisat tmit. Ah, no, 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 oiga. Can, can, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Kasher adam is there, she'elot tfisat tmit. When a person understands that he doesn't have his own, he's not his own person. I'll explain what I mean. As I eat the novel, me midat ha'anava, hu megiya la'anava. He says that if a person feels like I am, there's no me. Because we know that there's no me, you. We know that, that we're just like, we're all part of the same energy. We're all, we imagine this. Imagine when you go on the plane, you go into the clouds, above the clouds, just imagine a pool of energy. Every one of, every soul in the world is in this pool. Every soul in Kleistro is in this pool. When we come underneath the clouds, every single one of these souls that is really connected up, up above the clouds, it's all one, it's all one, it's water, it's a pool, it's all one. Okay, when it comes down underneath the clouds, it comes down like droplets, like rain. And making the person that the rain is hitting as if it's like each raindrop is from a different source. Each raindrop, okay, from, for our metaphor, comes from the same pool. It just once it comes underneath the clouds, it looks like that raindrop landed over there and that raindrop went onto that tree and that raindrop went into that ocean and every raindrop goes into his own thing and does his own thing, like it's his own thing, but it's not. It comes from the same source, it comes from the same pool. That's me and you, Shoshana and Rihanna and Marcella and everyone else. We are all, we all came before we came into this physical body. We all came from one place. That's why it says, ask us is what matters. That's why our whole mission into the, in this world as separate physical beings is to get back together again. And that when Shoshana is matliach, I'm matliach. When she has a simcha, it's my simcha, because it is, because we're, we're part of the same pool. And that's the whole point, why we're, we're, we're going into the three weeks now, and into the nine days now, into Tisha B'Av now, into this whole kufa now. Because when the drops came out of the, came out of the pool, down underneath the clouds, then they started thinking to themselves, I am me, I am my own person, I care only about my Dalai Ramos. I care only about what's important to me. The next guy can go fly a kite. I don't care what's going on in his life or what he what he's dealing with. That's his problem. I have my own problems. 
And that's when all the separation happens. And when the separation happens, God's like, that's not who you are. Yeah, you're in separate bodies. But the second you leave that body, you're all going back to the same source. You're all coming from the same source. That's why when we spend our lives and we teach our children to don't just think about yourself. Because every, whenever you think about yourself, you know you're shooting yourself in the foot. Because you're almost like stepping, you're separating yourself more and more and more and more and more from the thing that's actually giving you life. Meaning the more you connect, the more we're able to see the other person as just, it's called in, in, in Zohar terms, it's called akrasha. It's almost like you take water and you put it into the ice cubes, right? You put it into the, to the tray and then you put it into the freezer. And it's called akrasha. You took water and then you turned it into ice. Now it's a krish. It became hard, like coconut oil. You take it in a, in hot, a warm temperature, it's soft. When you put it in a colder temperature, it becomes hard, it stiffens. Each one of us is a stiffened expression of the creator in this world. I'm, I, I was stiffened, I was frozen into this, into Devora. hi. Uh, brown hair with some blonde in it. Green eyes, you know, uh, living in Israel, has this personality. Has, but this was, this was the way I was frozen into being. And then I was sent down into this world to live it. And then Marcella was frozen in her way, in her, in her, her cubicle. And then she was sent down into this world to live that. And so was Shoshana, and so was Rihanna. We're all was sketched, made, created in this way, and sent down. But really, when we're melted, we're all one. We're all one. And that's why our avoda in this world is to continuously connect and become that one, that achbus israel, that 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 the Because it is exactly that. Once I understand that my that lereacha, once I understand that my friend's have her simcha is my simcha, then I'll be happy. But if I'm seeing, oh, she got married, and I'm still not married, and I'm upset about that, then that makes me even further away from ever being happy, further away from ever experiencing connection, because our deepest happiness and pleasure comes from connection. Our deepest happiness and pleasure, pleasure. Why, why do us women want to get married if, if we don't have a mitzvah to get married? We don't have a mitzvah to get married. Why would we ever want that? Why would we ever want that? Literally. I, I speak to hundreds of women majority are unhappy in their marriage. Why? Because they want connection. They want connection and they feel like they can't get it. So they're always running after it. And the man is the one that has the mitzvah to get married. He's the one that has the mitzvah to get married and have the kids. But he has a harder time a lot of times, oftentimes, this is, I'm, I'm stereotyping, but I'm giving a, a general understanding. He has a harder time connecting. So that's why he has the mitzvah, he has to, we have a much more natural for us to want to connect because we're much more spiritual beings because connection is our middle name. Connection is our middle name. How do people connect? Through Dibor, okay? Dibor, the way of connecting two things is speaking to it, speaking to its heart, speaking to its mind. Women have a, a softer way of speaking oftentimes because we're all about, we're, we're geared towards connection. And that's why our biggest Yitzhah is also Lashon Hara. Because why, why is our biggest Yitzhah? Because our biggest, because our biggest Yitzhah told is to connect and to do things and to bring people together and to, to help out and to, to love and to nurture and to connect, 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 connect. Because that's our, that's our biggest strength, our biggest chisaron, our biggest downside, our biggest downfall is to use it in order to separate, to gossip, to separate people, to separate situations. Why is it b'schut nashim tzitkaniyot nigalu avotenu b'mitraim b'schut nashim tzitkaniyot nigalu atidim nigal? Why is it the women that are going to bring about b'shiach? Because we are all about connection. It's just that our our downfall is that I don't want them in my house and I'm never inviting them to my simcha. And you know her? You know what she did? You know how she talked to her husband? Or you know how much money he makes? A guy, it's a lot less uh, exciting for him these days. He can get together with his guy friend and drink a beer and just like. I don't know, make like weird noises, like, uh, uh. And then they're good. They, they get each other. They're on the same page. That's all they need. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Mm. That's all I got. That's all they need. <laughs> they're fine. You know what I'm saying? Because because they're not gonna, they're not bringing the geula. They're not bringing the geula. For all the men on this group, I'm so sorry. It wasn't me. It was Kuzal. They're not bringing the geula because they're not about connection. I told my wife I loved her five months ago. Like, what, what's the, what's the chedish? I should tell her again. I, I already told her. Like I checked it off my list, I did it, I feel it. Nothing has changed since five months ago, I'm good. She's like, you have to tell me all the time. You have to tell me every day, because I need to hear it, because I'm all about connection, because I'm wired 
for connection. That's why. I'm wired for connection. And connection is the name of our game. It's the name of our game. It's the name of our game. All of our Yeshuas, Rufuos, Hasachos, all the good things that are going to come to us as a nation, as a person, as an individual, as a family, okay, as, a, as your own family, and also as an individual in, inside of yourself, inside of your own family in here, is going to come from connecting to other people, connecting to things, making, bringing people together, connecting people, connecting a person in a job, connecting a person in a person, speaking good words to, to other people in order to connect. Why is our Kohen Kohen called Ohib Shalom, Berodif Shalom? What Shalom? Shalom, shalom is shlemus, connection, wholeness. What did he do? He spoke to people's hearts. Yeah, he might have bent the truth a little bit. He said some white lies, but it was all in an effort to bring people together, to bring love amongst people. And women, that's a very feminine quality that he had. Women have that quality very, very much. Knowing how to talk to someone in a way, you know, he didn't mean it. He's not, he, oh, he loves you. He Knowing how to, how, to, how to bridge, bring people together. That's our strength. And that's why our Yetahara has to be the opposite of that. Destruction, separation, okay? Pushing people away. Pushing people out, not wanting anyone to know what's going on in your life, isolating. That is the opposite. That is the opposite of what you are and who you are. Putting on a perfect face every single day and everything is fine with me. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just so nobody can come in. Nobody can connect with you because you haven't connected with you. This stuff is really, really, really deep and really intense. And I just want to end off with the, the earth sign that we're going to say. The next part I want to say to you that there's a few things that I want to say, but um, there's a few things that are the most just the most important. Hold on. Okay, so he says like this. He says the 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 person that has this this earth element in them, in and of themselves. If they don't think much of themselves, if they don't think much of themselves, not like, I deserve better than you, like that. If they don't think that way and they think like, whatever, I am, I am, whatever, I, I am, I am, then he can get to humility. This person can get to, there's nothing about me. It's me in terms of the cloud. It's me in terms of the whole picture. It's not me, like that, okay? So then he can get to humility, but if the person doesn't feel much of themselves, then this is a very earthy quality. They don't feel much of themselves. They don't, they don't feel, they're kind of empty. It's kind of hollow inside, okay? It can bring the person to shiklut, shiflas, to feeling no self-esteem, low self-esteem, acting out of a place of low self-esteem. Shiflut nabad mitfisat adam and low self-esteem comes from a person understanding ki kirekan ve He feels hollow and he feels empty. And that's where it comes from. It comes from the element of earth. The person, the person that feels empty and hollow, the person that feels that they're just there's nothing in here. There's nothing. It's empty. It's empty. It's empty. There's nothing in here. Meaning, I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel like uh, dying and passionate about this or running after that pleasure or or needing to move. I don't know, nothing. I could sit on this couch for endless days. That's why these are the people that have a much more of an atiyah, have much more of a leaning towards depression. Because the whole mahus of earth is, in, is stagnation, is not moving. Earth only grows, only moves, only flourishes when you, when you make it interact with something and someone else. If earth is not interacting with someone else that's healthy for them, they're, they're not moving anywhere. They're not going anywhere. They're depressed. When a person is an earth person and they're in a really in a, they're in a state where they can't move, they're in bed, they're depressed, they're sad, and you're their friend, you're their mom, God forbid, or whatever, you know, you have it in your family, someone's depressed. The first thing you have to do is not talk, is not anything. The first thing you have to do with them is get them moving. So that's when you change the actual, because they get very static. The energy around them can get very static, can get very boring with earth kind of people. It can get very boring, very, they, they can stagnate very easily. They don't necessarily move. They're stubborn. The, uh, until they change their schedule, you have to, you know, those people that have to buy a plane ticket like a year and a half in advance kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Those kinds of people. So they are very earth kind of people. Now, earth kind of people have a leaning towards sadness, low self-esteem, depression. They have a leaning towards that, much more susceptible to that. 
So the way to, to, way to help a person like that is to get them moving. The opposite of earth is air. Air is all about movement. So you know, if you're an earthy person, you have to start developing your air element, your moving element. Lo Bali, I don't feel like it. I feel like just sitting here. I feel like just doing the same, same every day. No. So now we're going to throw a wrench into your whole schedule and we're going to make you go on a 15 minute walk or run or jump, or you're going to go swimming or you're going to go shopping, or you're just going to get out of your room, out of your desk. And you're just going to go um, in the car and you're going to go to the ice skating rink. Just go. The whole point, the whole way to, to, to shake it up with earth is to make them move because they can get stuck and they don't know how to get unstuck. They need help getting unstuck. They need help from the other elements. I explained that. They don't, they interact best when they're interacting with other elements. Now the other elements are going to come and they're going to say, move. Aren't you excited? We're at a Tony Robbins seminar. Oh my God. He said to dance and the earth guy is just sitting there. So what you have, because he doesn't feel it. He doesn't feel it. The fire guy will feel it because he wants what Tony's offering. The water guy will feel it because he's just like flying on this experience. So he's just like jumping up and down and he loves it. The earth guy won't necessarily feel it. But the earth guy needs to move. So the earth guy that's learning these classes has to know that number one, movement is your BFF. Movement is your BFF. You want to maximize your elements? Move. It's not bad that you're dependable and that you have structure and that your, your mind thinks very logically and very concretely. It's not bad that you're stubborn. It's called, the Jewish people are called Am Kshayor. We're stubborn. It's not, we're, we would think God was stubborn. Otherwise, we wouldn't have Judaism today. We wouldn't have the Torah today, God forbid. We wouldn't have it if we weren't stubborn, okay? And so, so, so all of these things are good in your quality, your personality, but you also have a much easier, you're much more susceptible to getting down and to being down on yourself and to having a low self-esteem and not thinking much of yourself and thinking that you don't feel anything. What's wrong with me? Why am I hollow? Why am I empty? Why am I not like deep and like spiritual and like looking for more out of life? Like, why is it okay for me to sit in the same desk for 45 years and not move and have the same coffee mug that I drink my coffee out of every single day? Why is that okay? Like, that's how they think. Their self-esteem can get really, really bad because they see everyone else moving and shaking and flying and the CEOs and the, the fire cup personality, the guy that's like, you know, elbowing everyone to get to the top and the water guy that's traveling India and Thailand and making it to Jerusalem and Torah and all these things. And, and the wind person that's just like constantly moving, just let me fold laundry. Just put me in front of a sink of dishes and I'll do it. Put me in front of a laundry and I'll do it. Put me in front of shopping and I'll do it. They just want to do things. They always want to do things. And the earth is just like, I don't know. Okay. So, so the earth is BFF is, was, is air. If we weren't on such a public platform, I would share some personal things, but I can't do it. So I'm not going to do it. But, um, but uh, usually I'm just going to throw this in for a second. Usually opposites attract. So when you're dating someone, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to throw this out there for a second because it's my, my coachness in me having to say this. When you're dating someone, the more similar you are, the healthier that is. Okay. Even though it might be sexier, to date someone that's the opposite element to you. Just like, you know, you're earth, but this person's like wind and you know, we're going and going and doing, and that's so exciting and like enticing for you because you're so the opposite of that, right? Know that the best combination of people are similar people, meaning similar in cojos, similar in attributes, similar in passions, similar, similar. And now what's gonna happen with the earth person? They're going to marry an earth person? Oh my God, what's going to happen with their kids? <laughs> what's going to happen to them? So the earth person, depends on how healthy they are, could marry any of the elements. But they have to be healthy. And the element of water or wind or fire has to be very careful around earth because earth has a way of making things not move. And all three of those elements need to move. They need to move. And earth has a way of making the vibe, the energy in the home, one that doesn't move. And the person that is water or air or, or, or fire can go, can lose their head, can lose their mind, can lose their, can lose everything. Because they get their high, they get their fix off of movement, off of climbing, off of getting, off of moving, off of looking, off of, they get their, they get their, their, their life force from that. 
The last thing you want to do to them is put them in a situation where the person they're with is not moving in any direction. It's the same, same. The last thing you want to do for them is do that to them. They have to have a healthy amount of earth, but not an extreme amount of earth. So we're going to continue this next class. We just finished the Hagdama. Okay, congratulations. We finished the Hagdama. Wow, three classes, not bad. And next class, we are starting fire, Yisoda Esh, in depth. Okay, um, I, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, summarize this. I'm going to summarize it. It's very, very long. So it's a whole pairing that a lot of pages. I'm going to summarize it for you. Um, and I might send notes. I might not send notes. But I think that if you have the book in English, then you should for sure read the chapter. Deborah. Um, yes. So I'm going to moderate now for people that have questions, OK? Great. OK. Wait, you want to so, see the Elon Nishmas? Sorry, I forgot the Elon Nishmas. Oh, yes. This class is in memory of Deborah Fegel Bat Shmuel and Menachem Mendel Ben Elchanan Zichron Olibracha. Thank you. OK, so I'm going to mute the first person. There you go. Talk to me. All ears. Who's talking, Vivian? Okay, I have a question. My name Ooh, is what's Priscilla. Your name? What's your name? Priscilla. Hi. Hi. So you made me laugh. It was hilarious because I hear you and I see what my husband is and what I am. I'm definitely, I thought I was fire and wind and I think I'm all the moving element. Oh, hold on. How funny. He just called me. Let me just sign this. Hold on. Sorry. We still, hear you. we still hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Okay. So my question is about joy. You said we have to have joy. Now, do we have to have joy in order to attract joy? Because you said simha, you have to have simha. This it's just two questions. One, in order to have joy, you have to be joyous and then we'll attract joy, right? And then second question is, you said I need to move earth. Well, because I'm a fire, water, and I mean, I'm identifying with all the moving elements. My husband, how do you move earth? Because sometimes he's just like, uh, what are you doing? I overwhelm him. I overwhelm him. I consume yeah. him. And then I'm like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? And I feel like I'm just like burning him out, watering him out, winding him out. So how do I control that so that he's not freaking out on me? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna mute myself. <laughs> okay, so Priscilla, it's a really, really, really amazing question. The answer you're not gonna get right now, I'll, I'll like it a you're not gonna get, because you understand that the question is deep in its essence, okay? The, the real thing is, is that once every single person is balanced in their own elements, then when they're together, they're not together based on how, where the other person is. Like, you know, when he's, let's say, down, so sometimes you'll be like, honey, what's wrong? Or sometimes you'll be like, they'll come from different angles, using your different elements to try to raise him up, right? So the way this Chachma works, which is so, so nice, is that as long as you are being balanced within yourself, meaning you're gonna see that you're a fire person and you have certain qualities there, you're gonna say, oh, I really, really need to work more on my earthiness. Because you're such a moving person, you need to work more on your earthiness. And, and when you're gonna move into the space like that, and we're gonna, we're gonna we just we just started, this is just a, a taste, okay? Mm -hmm. But once you're gonna move deeply into this work of working on your earth and how that really looks, and not just like, you know, esoteric terms, but like how that really acts out in your life, then you're going to see how he all of a sudden will much, it'll be much easier for him to take you, to hear you, to work with you, because you're going to be more, you're going to have more of him. So you're going to have certain things that are much more in, in common for him. Energy, it's all energy, it's all energy, it has nothing to do with physical, it's all an energy mode. And, and he also has some work to do, but we're not talking about him. We're not talking about him. We're talking about you right now. Oh my God, you're so cute. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna mute the next person that has a question. Carla, there she goes. 
Hi, thank you. I didn't really have a question. I just wanted to say thank you because I love everything you do and the fact that I get to do this is great. The other How come thing I don't is, get to see you, Clara? Clara? Well, because I don't think I look too good today, so I'm, oh. I'm hiding, but there I am. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I, I oh. found the book. Um, it's Getting to Know Your Soul is the title in English. Okay. And the only place I have been able to find it is through SephoraCenter.com. So if anybody is a book learner like me, oh, I don't have it yet. I just found it to order. Oh, okay. I've been, I've been working hard on it. <laughs> but you have to search getting to know your soul and then it pops up. Getting to know your soul. I'm going to write that down. Thank you. Thank you for Thank letting you. me know. Thank you. Where are you joining from? Where are you from? Um, I'm outside Athens, Georgia. Very nice. Well, I'm inside Jerusalem, Israel. <laughs> yes, I, we're, we're very far away. And just let me say briefly, I'm so sad, sad about what happened to you yesterday when you went to pray. It's okay. I, I have to say this. Like, I was okay. I was just distraught by the, I felt like I was looking at, you know, the situation in the nation kind of thing you know like that's why I felt like I was looking at wasn't him per se and him giving me beef like I was okay with that I, I'm used to it I live in Israel you know what I'm saying I'm not like I'm, I'm not made out of sugar I can I can hold my own but I just felt like look at this like you know this Arab kid that was just so easily like so freely so lovingly sharing with me and here's my Jewish brother that's just being like no you know it was just like whoa it just made me feel like we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to open our hearts more. That's it. Us Jews, we have to like more open our hearts to each other more. Well, I thank still you. hate that it happened to you, but I did learn from it. So thank you for sharing it. Thank you, Carla. Thank you so much. I hope to see you next week. I'll okay. Bye. We have a last question. Rihanna. 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 Hey. Hey. Oh, am I unmuted? Oh, it works. Okay. I just wanted to clarify um, when you're talking about um, Yad Bahalev or the expression you're saying about like the, was that, that's an earth element specifically? Like to, that, to be that's blocked. That's not a term. That's like an Israeli term. That's not a Torah term. But Tita Yad Bahalev is like a, is like a metaphoric way of saying, take your heart, take your hand out of your heart. Meaning let your heart be expressive in this world. Meaning mm -hmm. it's all right. You don't have to be a stickler. You, they, they, they took, you know, they borrowed a hundred dollars. You know, they gave back 90. Yalla. Like that. Mm -hmm. Don't be, don't be a medak dek. And every tiny little, let it go, let it go, let it go. Because when you are like that, that's how Hashem is with you. And that's how Shemayim is with you. Okay. She mm -hmm. said, yalla, yalla. Look, she gave over here extra. She did over here. She let him keep the change. She, you know, like when you're like, you know, counting and every single thing and you're a stickler and you, but you said you're going to be home at eight o'clock and it's eight o two, you know, it, that wasn't okay. We have to let that out, out of our system, to air that out of our system. Oh, thank you. Of course. Of course. Anyone else? Seems like we have no more questions. So thank you for the class, Devora. Thank you oh, so much. We, ha we have a question. Ah. Sorry, one more question. Gabrielle. Hi, Devara. How are you? Hi, where are you? Okay. I don't get to see you. Um, I look terrible. I've been, I've been looking this way since like for a month. I'm like painting my house and I'm in my snood and I'm in a like very painted shirt. So I don't know. Oh, Can I see you anyway? <laughs> You saw me you before. Get to see me ugly. You guys get to see okay. me every day. I look scary, but whatever. Okay. Anyway, so Yay. here I am. <laughs> okay, could I um, stop the video because like it's a recording? So anyway, anyway, so um, okay. Um, first of all, thank you so much. Um, you are the cutest, most fun. I love you. You're so cute. You're, oh my god, I love you too. Yeah, you're full of life, and um, you're a lot of fun to watch. And I can relate a lot to you. Like I really, I don't know. I feel very connected to you, even though I don't know you. Um, and I wanted to ask you, um, you mentioned a couple of times that you have a WhatsApp chat and I'll be interested in joining. Okay. So I have a few, I have a few WhatsApp chats. Um, so you know what, 
Where are you? Where do you follow me? Where do you see my stuff? So, um, so first I discovered you here and then I continued following you on YouTube. Okay. So do you have Facebook? I do. I try not to go there, but if I need to, I will. Okay. Tell me. <laughs> okay. So can you go into my Facebook? That's like the most you'll, I think that you'll get the most from that. You'll have, I have all of my stuff uh, written there. Oh, uh, okay. So meaning any WhatsApp group that's out there, you can join, you can click the button there and you can just join it. Um, courses that are coming up, talks that I'm doing. Um, so now I'm doing this whole massive project that I haven't told anyone yet about and I'm not going to say anything yet, but it's going to be very like reality TV show. It's going to be kind of amazing. Yeah. So it's all going to be on Facebook though. Okay. And I could also get that you information. You friends, all your friends and just be friends with me. Okay. And then one more question. Um, you also mentioned something that you're working on helping, um, helping us get to Israel. Like you said, like that's like one of the things that you're working on. Yeah. So, so I could find that information there too. Send me a message either, either on my WhatsApp. Do you have my WhatsApp number? No. Okay. So, um, Okay, so I guess Vivian, if you can. Or you yes, can. I can give her your number. Okay, amazing. So Vivian's okay. going to send it to you. Okay. And okay, uh, you. you can send me a message and then I'm going to give you information. If anybody needs information about coming to Art Israel and making Aliyah, I am not directly, I'm not directly hand holding people, but I am part of a bigger group of leaders that are doing that. So um, any person that I present to them, they're going to hand hold. They're going to get into your life. They're going to ask you to do certain things. They're going to ask you to send in, you know, uh, a letter asking what you need, what you're looking for, how many people you are, when you want to get out by. Like they'll hold handhold very yeah. much. Um, just, um, I like to do that, but like, what if like I do, but my husband's not there yet? Could they? Could we could begin a process and hopefully when he reaches? Yeah. A yeah, they could. Listen, they the could. process in America, the process takes time. It takes time. Unless you want to come, 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 and you're ready to make Aliyah within three months, then you can come to Israel and make Aliyah when you're in Israel. But if you want to still, like, a little bit take some time because you need some time to organize yourself, then right. at least get the basic stuff done in America because that you can do. Okay. Okay, thank you. So she's going to send me, she's going to private message me on, um, I don't know, the person, the, the MC. Vivian, yeah. thank you, Vivian. So she'll, she'll let me know in the chat. I just have to look at chat yeah. and she'll send me the yeah. information. I guess so. Vivian, are you going to send it to her in a private message? Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. I think you get the messages. So if you're saved to the phone, that's also easier. I can send it to you on WhatsApp. Uh, uh, okay, fine. Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. So you, you know how to find me? You know, I'm going to send it to you right now, just in case. Her name is Priscilla Estrello. No, my name is Gabrielle. No, Gabrielle. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know. I know. Who am I looking at here? Oh, because it moved. Okay, okay, okay. Gabrielle Jasky. Yeah, Jasky. Yeah, it's in Spanish. Jasky. Nice. Okay, I sent it to you. Okay. Is that it? Is that everyone? You sent it on WhatsApp? No, I sent it to you on the Zoom chat right now. Oh, my. Okay, let me find Private it. Private message. Yeah. Hold on. Chat. Oh, I got it. Okay. You got it? Yeah, I didn't finish writing it. Hold on. Okay, I just want to okay. say thank, thank you, you to, to Deborah for the class. Right. And uh, thank, you. thank you everyone for tuning in. And we have another Lighthouse class later on tonight, 7.30, Rabbi Sprung on the Parsha. So tune into that same Zoom link. Awesome, Rabbi Sprung is a bomb. Devora, you were really, really adorable to listen to. <laughs> we, that's you. why we, you see what we look like? That's why we go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. You're my sisters. It's all good. Accept and love every single part of you. And I want to tell you one thing. I have never been called cute so much in my life. And I feel like I am so like tough and I'm in people's faces and everyone's like, oh, but you're so cute. Anyway, working on that. <laughs> all right. Have a good night, everyone. Have a great day. Talk soon. See you next week.